really a pleasure to be here. All right, so here's another cartoon, Distrust Every Word, which is basically every media source from across the spectrum. So what are the political implications of this? Uh, not surprisingly, if we look at trust in the media over time, we can see that it's dropped dramatically over the last, and this is only since 1997. If we go back to the 60s, the drop is even larger. That basically we're in this situation exemplified by that last slide I showed you, where everybody trusts nobody. So what are we supposed to do with this? How can we navigate this field? Now, bringing it closer to home, you know, thinking about the, um, so what would be the coming revolution and the loss of trust in medicine, the bad news that I have for you today is that it's already here. So here, this is polls going back to the 1970s, and I pull this, the headline here is that confidence in leaders of the scientific community has been pretty stable since the 70s. So this is seen as a good news, but if you look at this in comparison, looking at trust in medicine has dropped pretty dramatically since the 1970s. So you don't need to wait for the loss in trust in medicine. It's already here today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how to navigate that, what to do about that, uh, and really talking more generally about what I've learned about the loss of expertise and authority, and really this loss in trust of facts, and specifically the mistrust of experts. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be talking more about the problems than the solutions, but um, hopefully can brainstorm about some ideas that can be effective. Uh, but thinking about how we can build credibility. And so this is about as happy as my lecture will get here, thinking <laughs> about this. Um, but thinking about how can we build credibility in a world of low trust, right? How can we have the truth win out? What strategies, not, you know, here's where it is. The difference is, I'm not saying which strategies will work, but thinking about some strategies that could work. And how can we effectively communicate in a world where facts and science should speak for themselves? You know, I'm, you know I've spent my last 20 years in a university. You know, I'm, I'm a person of facts and science, uh, but I've realized that when studying the American public, and really the world public more generally, this doesn't happen. You know, what happens there? So, um, I've already shown you about the decline of trust in both the media and medicine, uh, but thinking about how did this happen, and part of it is this mistrust of expertise and this rise of alternative facts. Um, how to convey facts, right? So this notion of facts speaking for themselves, right? That if you hear a piece of misinformation, counter it and move on to the next thing. And so I think here where, where trust can kind of come in as a way to, to think about that. Now there's two things I wanna talk about. Uh, the first is unrelated to my work on rumors, but comes out of my knowledge of 20 years of writing surveys and thinking about how to convey ideas from political elites, right, politicians, to ordinary citizens, the mass public. And the key here is thinking about communication strategies. So think about building trust as communication. Putting yourself in your audience's shoes is really important. And here's the most important part. Don't tell people to trust you convince them to trust you. So here's the two strategies. Right, so first let me talk about this uh, notion about experts and lay people speaking different languages. And then second, I'm gonna talk about relying on uh, unexpected sources. Right, so the most important thing to do is to speak your audience's language. Now, this is really hard. So think about that MIT climate scientist I talked about. He said, well, I'm just gonna go and talk to climate deniers you know, I'm gonna basically lay the science on them and everything's gonna be fine. Now, this is intuitive, right, that they should have authority, but the problem is that a lot of times, experts don't speak the language of their audience. Because our training and what makes us uh, successful in our field doesn't necessarily make us effective communicators, right? Think about academic journal articles, right? You wouldn't necessarily hand them to your audience, uh, to your patients, and say, oh, here, this explains everything, right? Because as an expert, you have the expertise, the background knowledge, the lingo to decipher what that means, right? That brings me to the end here, and kind of what I'm hoping that y you take away from this is a couple points, right? The first is that expertise does not necessarily lead to trust, right? And so this is, again, going back to my conversation with my colleagues in climate science at MIT, they're really well-intentioned, and, and these are National Academy science-level scientists. These are the biggest experts. These are people who want 
the mass public to accept their findings, right? But just going and saying, I'm an MIT scientist, here's true, isn't gonna work, right? Because authority is not automatically granted. Uh, so how can we build authority? I think the most important thing is don't tell people to trust you, convince them to trust you, right? So you can do this a couple ways. Put yourself in your audience's shoes, right? Use language that they can understand in a way that you can effectively communicate what it is that you want them to, to know, uh, speaking the language of your audience, and finally, finding authority through action, right? And then here's really where this, my experiments come in, is that authority can be given by dint of your position. You're just finding the right person to say it. Uh, and so here is the kind of thing is that even though in many ways these are not very happy findings, there are some possibilities there. Right, hardliners might be a lost cause. Um, and so I, I, mean I can't say what I'm doing at Facebook, but I can say the same arguments I'm making here today, I'm making to people when I talk to them at Facebook, which is basically there's a group of people that you're not gonna be able to convince, right? That these are the people who are hardline uh, anti-vaxxers. And so spending the time trying to convince those people is a lost cause. However, there's another group of people, you can think about like the true believers, the uncertain, and then the people who, uh, who do believe in it, that even if you can't move people from the true believers to the I accept vaccines, you can move people who are uncertain to the truth, right? So kind of increasing these rejection of misinformation by targeting people who, I like to say, are caught in the crossfire. 